Does China make aerodynamic cars? Apparently, 70% of car sales are for Chinese cars. That number is forecast to increase to 43% by 2035. How much better or worse are the aerodynamics of their cars then? To find out, we tested a BYD Song Plus, which is a mid-level SUV from the Chinese company BYD. It's a pretty interesting car featuring some potentially very aerodynamic regions, like the rear wheel vents that are supposed to reduce the wake size and hence the drag, or the fact that it's a hybrid electric so you don't get as much cooling drag. It has a natural advantage there. This simulation is at 20 meters per second, so about 45 miles per hour. The legend is in meters per second. Because it's an SUV, we can't expect it to be as aerodynamic as a fastback sedan, for example. But compared to regular SUVs, we can see some similar features. For example, we do have a very large front, and this car is actually a little odd in this respect. So this is a hybrid. As such, it doesn't need as much air entering either for the engine or for cooling as a regular combustion car. But it still has a very large front. If it needed that much flow, then that would be great. But it doesn't. So we're just introducing a big flat face for little reason. Now the exact aerodynamic information on this car is quite limited. From what I could find, the front is closed when in electric mode. So not only do you have a large face, but it's completely blocking off the air to the engine bay. So you have this large mass of incoming air that has to redirect. We can see that here where you have so much air decelerating becoming blue and the pressure rises a lot. Because we have so much pressure here, that's pushing the car back and creating more drag. I really don't know why BYD did this. At the very least, keeping the front grille open when you're in electric mode would probably be better than nothing because then the air could enter and go through its usual pathway to exit. That would most likely reduce the drag even a little bit. Here, I don't see why you'd want to have this blunt, blocky front. So to begin with, the BYD isn't great. But there's more to this car than just the front, and it could claw some of that drag back to get to a sane level. For example, underneath the front, the BYD is actually very good. This is one region that most cars get wrong, but the song here gets it right. What I mean is the front lip. You can see that the flow follows it nicely. It's completely attached, which means less drag is formed. As a side note, the flow also accelerates, which means that the pressure drops. Funnily enough, last week, when we were looking at the Aston Martin DB11, I was saying how it does this region so well and far better than pretty much any other car I've seen. This car isn't too far behind that. Likewise, because the flow stays attached so well, we don't get this major artificial contraction which then forces the air to flow through an even smaller area. As such, we don't get any back pressure forming. So we get very good downforce underneath here. The funny thing being that this car, being a regular SUV, and not even a performance SUV, doesn't really need downforce. So a lot of cars that could use something like this don't have it, and this car that doesn't need it has it. Either way, this lip design is good for lowering the drag. And just quickly, if you'd like us to simulate your very own car, let us know here. Now, we've talked about how good the front lip is aerodynamically, but why is it so good? Well, it has a lot to do with just a simple rounding of the edge. That small amount of rounding is enough for the flow to stay attached over it. It's a very small detail that more SUVs than sports cars or supercars use. And keeping to the rest of the underbody, the BYD does a great job. Even all the way to the diffuser, the flow is very nicely behaved with decent low pressure. The diffuser itself is good. It's not aggressive, but it's not non-existent either, like the Honda Civic from a few weeks ago. So there's something there, and it's angled perhaps a little more than an average diffuser. That helps kick the flow up, reduces the wake size, and hence the drag. That also happens because the flow is attached over the diffuser. Despite it being a little more angled than average, the air still follows it nicely. We can see an adverse pressure gradient over it. You can tell that as you go along the pressure rises, and that results in a thicker boundary layer, as you can see by the green layer thickening. But that doesn't really matter here because the negative effects of the thick boundary layer are fairly minimal. All that happens is that the flow shooting into the wake is a little bit slower, which means that the wake isn't as small as it could be, but the differences are very minor. And to get rid of the adverse pressure gradient isn't really possible here without strakes or injecting more air. For a basic diffuser like this, this is the best you can really hope for and pretty good. So while BYD didn't do great at the front, the diffuser is very good. Looking at the hood, 
The song is pretty average. The nose rounding at the front is good. You can see that it matches the angle of the flow going over it. That's even more impressive considering that there's this little air intake just in front of the hood's nose. One thing that could be improved is if the hood's rounding was shared more over the entire hood. Currently we get a lot of flow acceleration which comes with low pressure, but also because the flow is changing so much and so quickly, viscosity will be sapping energy away more than if it were more a gradual process. That is a minor point, but the major point of distributing the rounding over the entire hood more is that the hood can be blended into the windshield more. Currently, it is very disjointed with the windshield, and that means that the flow hits the windshield quite flat. It has to decelerate a lot, as we can see by how green and even blue the flow is in this junction. So the flow is dumping a lot of its energy into the windshield, and that results in high pressure pushing the car back. In a way, this is effectively the same problem it has at the front, where the faces are just too flat to the oncoming flow. So a lot of the air's kinetic energy gets dumped into the car, which creates drag. Let's now move to the roof. Overall, it's pretty good. There's a little bit of flow acceleration over the front, effectively over the driver's head, but that's to be expected, especially considering that the windshield isn't sloped down more. So we get low pressure here too, and a little more lift, but again, for this regular SUV, lift is not that important. The thing I really like is the rear spoiler though. You can see it's working exactly how it should. It's not sloped down too much, so it isn't shooting high speed flow into the wake as much as it would if it were sloped more, but it's still not bad. It provides a crisp point for the flow to detach from the roof, which makes the wake a little steadier. It also helps produce a small recirculation region over the rear window. The other two sides that are needed are the vertical fins, one on each side. Those two vertical fins also give the flow crisp edges to detach from. The benefits of having this little steady wake now in the back is that first, the steadiness means the forces on the car are steadier too. That makes driving a little easier. That's not a huge deal for such a big SUV. But the other major benefit is that it reduces how much the flow flaps from side to side, which actually reduces the time average drag. That is important for the SUV. So why do these vertical fins along with the rear spoiler create this little steady zone of goodness? If they weren't there and you had curved surfaces instead, the car would be more like a bluff body. For example, a cylinder. The flow behind the cylinder is unsteady with the quintessential fluid mechanics of a Von Karman street forming behind it. In our video, Aero Fundamentals number 35, Von Karman Vortex Street, we go through why a Von Karman Vortex Street forms in more detail, including the controversial explanations. But in a nutshell, boundary instabilities, so inequalities in the boundary development, makes one side less prone to separating than the other side. We would get the exact same thing happening here, where the flow traveled around curved rear edges. One side would want to separate before the other side would. That creates an instability that causes one side to separate, but then it's too much, so it reattaches, and then the other side separates, and back and forth we go. On a car, that creates flapping, which is just when the wake flaps from left to right. If you were to average the drag over that cycle, it is usually higher than if you made the wake steadier, so no flapping. That's one of the major benefits of this rear window setup. If we shift over 70 centimeters to the left of the center plane, we see something really interesting. So zooming in on the diffuser, this is usually a problematic area for cars in this region. That's because you have rear wheel wakes fitting into the diffuser. That's bad because the diffuser now has worse flow to work with, so it can't perform well. We don't seem to get that exact same thing here though. Instead, we actually get the flow that's flowing over the diffuser, separating at the front edge. This flow is coming from the wheelhouse and is very vertical. So it tries to flow around this very sharp edge and then can't do it. As a result, the diffuser here experiences separated flow and you can see just how less effective it is now. The flow behind it doesn't kick up at all. With that comes more drag too because the wake is larger. Moving to this plane, which is a horizontal surface, 40 centimeters off the ground, the flow here is pretty impressive. The thing I'm impressed with the most is the front left wheel. Wheels create large wakes, but here that's not really the case. The flow on the front wheel is incredibly good in this plane. It has a lot to do with the front edge just before the wheel. The BYD features air curtains and here they're working really well. What they are is a little slot at the front which funnels some of the air through the fender's edge and then shoots it around the wheel, at least that's the hope. Some air curtains angle the air out more than others. 
Here, the air curtain is softening off some of the air that would usually rush around the edge. That helps keep the flow attached around this edge because if you have more flow having to go around the edge, the flow in general would be more curved outwards. That would increase the angle between the flow and the edge, and that would increase the chances of flow separation here. By taking some of that flow away and redirecting it, the flow around this edge is more in line with the downstream face, so it can stay attached over the edge. That greatly reduces the wake around the front wheel, and we still do get low pressure here, but it's not as bad as it would be. And that also helps reduce the wheel wake size, because you don't have as much low pressure sucking the flow out and creating a larger wake around it. So this little air curtain is really altering the flow. Now having said that, while it does dramatically improve the flow on the side and reduce the drag, it doesn't reduce the drag as much as it might seem. Usually, you're only looking at around 3 to 5 counts, so a percent or two. That's because it alters the wheelhouse flow as well, and also the flow exiting the wheelhouse. This simulation was done with OpenFoam. If you'd like to learn OpenFoam, then check out our courses here. Now moving to 60 centimeters off the ground, the flow on the front wheel is still really good. I'm quite impressed with the BYD's front wheel flow and the lack of drag from it. I mean, yes, in this plot, there is a lot of drag, but by modern standards, this is actually very little. For example, last week when we looked at the Aston Martin DB11, there was a lot of drag from the front wheels. So relatively speaking, this is actually pretty good. The front of the car is okay, again, we have a large flat face at the front, and we can see just how much the flow has to redirect around it, which is to be expected from an SUV. The front outer parts are pretty decent though, they help channel the redirected flow away more. We still do get very high pressure here at the front, and comparing it to the rear's low pressure, we can't expect a low drag. When you get so much of the car's frontal area and rear face experiencing such a large pressure difference, the car is going to have to have high drag even if everything else is great. Now one thing that's letting the rear down is the flow outside of the wheelhouses. This car does have rear vents to help alleviate that flow, and we do have them here, but still, there seems to be too much flow still trying to escape. So with this speed and with this wheel rim combo, the vents aren't enough. Now if you move up to 80 centimeters of the ground, we can see what happens when you don't have those rear vents. The wake is also large, but the reason for this large wake is actually a little bit different now. So at 60 centimeters off the ground, clearly the flow from inside the wheelhouses are bursting out, separating around the rear edges of the wheelhouse, and then creating wakes from there. Here, that doesn't seem to be the case. It seems like the flow stays attached around the rear edge, but separates by itself around the side now. A way to fix that would be to round the rear edges more. That would help the flow stay attached around them, because you can see pretty clearly here that as soon as that small but sharp edge starts, the flow separates. This is actually a great example of how something so small can have such a large impact on the flow. Now moving up to one meter off the ground, I'm even more impressed here. The flow is very well behaved over the entire length of the car, and only the rear do we get a large wake. A similar trick could be done here by just rounding the rear edges a little to reduce the wake size, but overall, I've been super impressed with all these horizontal planes and how the song has very good flow down its sides. And that's why the drag coefficient comes in at 0.38. Now that might not seem great, but it's an SUV. And pretty much most of that is from the blocky geometry. The large rear face, the large front face. So many of the parts that can be made more aerodynamic, like the wheels, have been made more aerodynamic. So overall, this car shows that China can make cars that rival ours, at least aerodynamically speaking, which is the most important thing anyway. If you're buying a car and your main concern isn't aerodynamics, then you're a wiener. Now for the lift, it produces 4.9 kilos of it, which is pretty close to neutral. So not too bad. So thank you for watching. Peace out amigos.